How do you communicate the realities of climate change without people switching off, though? Well, uh, Zaya, um, there's a really interesting stat that uh, cake was apparently mentioned 10 times more than climate change on UK TV shows in 2020. So what's your view? Is climate change taken seriously enough? Is the right message getting out there, whether it's factual programmes or fictional ones? Well, I think that there are several difficulties that science communicators and scientists have faced, and one of them does have to do with the media. I know that stat from BAFTA that came out, which is quite frightening that cake gets more coverage. But the thing is, we have to think we're facing a code red climate emergency. And if you look around, there's only one daily climate show on Earth, and we happen to be on it right now. So we need a lot more coverage. That's for sure. The other thing, though, that scientists have faced is that big oil and lobby groups and think tanks have actively interfered in climate science for years, just like big tobacco. And so they've been injecting doubt. So scientists have spent, you know, 20, 30 years fighting this disinformation when they could have been putting across clear science. A couple other points, though, is that scientists themselves can improve in terms of using less dense language and also not using such big numbers. Human beings suffer from what's known as scale blindness. So if I start saying things like, you know, we've lost 46 million uh, acres of trees every year, 29 trillion in national debt, 1,600 billion in weapons and arms, people's eyes glaze over. You've probably heard the saying that one death is a tragedy and one million is a statistic. So it's very important that we are concise with our language and also tell stories that stick to the facts but are also a little bit more personal because that reaches people and has more impact. Uh, yeah, and Tom, do you agree with that? And, and also, what about tone as well? Because do you think that scaring people is effective? You know, people kind of get the, the severity of the problem or do you think people switch off? I mean, how, how do you pitch the tone when you're talking about climate change? Well, I mean, scaring people has a role, right? I mean, in terms of waking up and being aware of the situation that we're facing, and that's often what the school strikers are saying to us, is we need to tell the truth, we need to be honest about the situation that we're facing, but it, it, it runs out of road after a while. I mean, Part of the issue that we face at the moment is that the issue is so large, as was explained by Zia, and the, and the solutions that each of us can put into place are so small in commensurate, in commensurate with the size of the problem. So as a result of that, you get to a situation where everything that you do feels futile. I also think, I mean, I think it's great that we have this daily climate show and I, I hope to see more of it. I also think this needs to be baked into all kinds of other programming that happens around the world. I mean, the fact that cake is mentioned so many times on British television, I had no idea there are ways in which climate change intersects with cakes, right? And we should actually be finding other platforms and interests and ways in which people are already talking about issues that they're, that they're concerned about and demonstrating how that intersects with climate. It doesn't have to be a specifically climate-focused piece to bring in the fact that climate is going to touch that issue too. Uh, well, we are out of time, but thank you both for bigging up the Daily Climate Show. We, we didn't insist on it, but we appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Tom Ribbett-Karnak, <laughs> Zaya Tong, always good to see you both. Thanks very much indeed.